Cooperative games make for great drinking games. I think something about a shared, abstract enemy reminds us of classic drinking games like King's Cup or the bearable versions of the Twilight movies. Escape, The Curse of the Temple, is a cooperative game, and it's also timed, with your choice of a spooky soundtrack or a lame, lame sand timer. This makes for a lot of frenetic activity, especially when you're drinking. If you're gonna play this game with us, bring some paper towels. Oh no! In Escape, you and your fellow archaeologists wake up in the middle of a cursed temple. This setting may come as a shock, but probably not. It's my understanding that this is just a regular Tuesday for archaeologists. You and your archaeologist buddies have 10 minutes to explore the temple, activate some magic crystals, find the exit, and get the hell out of there before you're trapped inside forever. Oh yeah, and twice in those 10 minutes, you'll have to drop everything and sprint back to the starting room just because the temple's a dick. Sounds easy, right? How hard can it be to move around a bit and then retrace your steps? Well, hard actually. As mentioned before, this game is played in real time. There's no taking turns. You're all exploring simultaneously, chaotically trying to make plans together, shouting at each other, talking over each other, and crying out in despair or triumph at your fortunes. Yes, fortunes, as in luck. In order to do anything in this game, you have to roll dice. Want to explore a new room? roll. Want to activate a magical pedestal and thus one of the magical crystals that you need to unlock the exit and survive the temple? Roll again. And again. Keep rolling, mother Wait, Jordan, I didn't f***ing write that. The fuck you put in my script, script boy? Basically, you'll be rolling your dice as fast as possible all game long. Check out these dice. These are not your weird great uncle's Parcheesi dice. There are five separate symbols that you can roll. Not six. It's a six-sided dice. This is an all-ages channel. Except for the swearing and the drinking. Three of them, the running dude, the torch, and the key, are used to move around and explore the temple and to activate those magical gems that I keep talking about. You'll need to roll a particular set of symbols to perform each specific action. Don't worry. You can keep some dice on the table and re-roll whichever dice you want whenever you want until you have the desired result. But actually, do worry. If you roll a black mask, that die is locked and can't be picked up or used again until you roll a golden mask and break the curse. Fortunately, your team can break your curses if you're in the same room, and vice versa. Otherwise, it would be truly hopeless. The game starts with all of you in the central chamber with two rooms ready to be revealed on either side. They'll be flipped over when the timer starts. As you roll frantically, you have a couple of actions that are generally available. You can move into an already explored room by rolling the symbols indicated in the red box of that room. You can explore, adding a new room tile to an unexplored location next to your room. Make sure that the staircase points to the room that you're currently in. If the room you're in has crystals in it, you and anybody else in that room can combine your dice to activate as many crystals as you think it's worth waiting for. But the choice is permanent. There's no coming back later if you decide you want to activate more in that room. The temple is discovered randomly each time, which means that you can't really plan ahead. You can only hope that you find the exit in a location that's not too far from your starting point. Remember I mentioned there were times that you had to sprint back to the starting room? Well, if you don't make it back to the starting room in time, you lose one of your dice permanently. This makes you slower, weaker, and generally a pain in the ass for your team to drag to the exit. But if you play it too safe and don't get out there and explore, you'll be f***ed because you won't even know where the exit is. And even if you do manage to find the exit, and it's near to your starting point, you're still if you didn't manage to activate enough crystals along the way. To escape, each of you has to roll as many keys as there are unactivated crystals, plus one. You've only got five dice, so if you wind up with more than four unactivated crystals, pretty much GG. There's also an optional rules variant, where you can make the temple even more dangerous and lucrative by adding evil curses and awesome treasures. You get cursed when you explore certain rooms, and the curses are nasty, but also hilarious. A few example curses. You may not be able to speak anymore. You may be forced to keep one hand on your head at all times. You may permanently lose any die that falls off the table. And if you're really unlucky, big fingers. Curse-tastic. Once you're cursed, you'll have to decide whether to live with it and adventure onwards, or devote precious seconds to rolling the correct combination of symbols that will break the curse. Treasure chests, on the other hand, contain some sweet loot including emergency keys and torches, healing masks, and portable secret passages. 
they almost make up for the terrible, terrible curses. Except for Dick Fingers. Doesn't make up for Dick Fingers. So that's Escape, The Curse of the Temple. Click my face if you want to watch us get Indiana Jones playing it as a drinking game. But before you do, subscribe to us, click the like button if you actually did like this video, and leave a comment below telling us what game we should play next. I'll see you next week, but until then, play responsibly. Taking away their last line of defense and setting them up for certain- BOOM! Obliteration. Ugh. Seriously, Jordan?